All right, everybody, we'd like to thank you for coming. Today we brought in Chad Engel from Nebraska Rich Management. He's going to do a little fire safety training, fire extinguisher training. If you guys so choose, you can come down and put out a fire one time. It's not a real fire. <laughs> Thanks. It's as, as close as we can get to a real fire inside. Good afternoon. Thanks for coming. Uh, again, my name's Chad Engel. Do you guys have any idea what NERMA is, Nebraska Risk Management Association? Some of you do. For those of you that don't, uh, we are a third-party risk management. Uh, it's a great company. We, we work with NCCIT, which is the Community College Insurance Trust, and, and we work with some other uh, political subdivision divisions in the state of Nebraska doing basically insurance type work, claims administration, loss prevention and safety training, those types of things. So that's my relationship or Nerma's relationship with the college. We administer, uh, we do a lot for NCCIT and the college is a member of NCCIT. So today's training, uh, we're talking about fire extinguishers. Anybody ever used one? A real one? A couple? Most of us haven't. And we had four out of the group have, have used them, which is good. It's probably not fun if you have to. So cover today uh, what we need for a fire to occur the elements that, that need to be present for a fire to occur uh, this is awesome I usually don't get to teach in our classrooms I'll get to teach like in some back room of the courthouse or, or in a, a auto shop um, the extinguisher type we're going to talk about the different types of extinguishers you're going to uh, find and the uh, the basic concept most folks have heard of pass right Pull, aim, squeeze, sweep. We're going to go into a little more detail there. And then we've also got race. So before we get to pass, we're going to have to race, right? So that's our, our steps. Before we even go grab an extinguisher and try to extinguish a fire, we'll make sure we've got those. And then we're going to demonstrate that. So you should feel really special. <laughs> All right? So the combustion process, some basic things about how did the fire start. We've got to have enough heat to ignite whatever material right, is burning. We've got to have fuel, that's that material that's going to burn, and, and the fuel depends on where you're at. The, the type of fire extinguisher you choose depends on the type of fuel that's fueling the fire. So that's something we need to know beforehand. We don't wait until the fire starts and then we go try to find the right extinguisher. We make sure we've got the right extinguishers in the right areas or the right places. And then it's got to have oxygen to sustain a flame, right? Without the oxygen, we don't have a fire. I refer to that as the fire triangle. Pretty basic kind of a review. Um, the different classes. These are the different kinds of classes of extinguishers. There's, a, a, there's an A, right? Uh, which is basically uh, regular trash, if you will. I, I was taught uh, by an old guy at the safety council how to remember these. A, if you burn wood, paper, or cloth, what do you get? What's left? Ashes. A, ashes, right? So that's an A type fire. B are uh, flammable liquids. Had an open gas can in your garage and the fumes were filling out and you threw a match there, what's gonna happen? Boom, right? B, so we got B for boom. So class D, flammable liquids, liquids that are gonna go boom or fumes that will go boom. C, electrical equipment. We got some different examples. Anything that plugs into the wall or is wired. Uh, and if something uh, has electricity to it, what would we say that it is? Charged. So it's C, it's charged, right? So A, ashes, B, boom, C, charged. C's for electrical. And then uh, combustible metals is D. That's a pretty unique type of fire. For the 99% of us, we're not going to be in an environment where there are uh, combustible metals. So, I mean, if you're in one of those environments, extinguishers should be present already, and you'd have some training on that, but you're not going to need to worry about that for the most part. What's D stand for? D? Yeah. D, combustible metals. That's yeah, a great. We had, right, great funny sayings for the first three. I don't have one. If you come up with one, <laughs> I'll hook you up with something special. Okay? D, that's good. D for D. <laughs> cool. That's a good one. Thank you. Dangerous. Right, dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> a little more specific. Yeah, you guys need to work on that. <laughs> Brain trust. Exercise and figure something out. Uh, then there's K, kitchen fires, right? K is kitchen, pretty common. Uh, you, you can buy specific class K's, right? Uh, I, I kind of touched on this already, but the key is to know what the uh, fuel is that's burning beforehand, right? We don't have time once the fire starts to, to hope we have the right one. And, and what happens, if you look at that, that second bullet point, what happens if we spray a water, an air pressurized water extinguisher on your toaster that's still plugged into the wall that's burning? Is it going to put that out? No. How about if you spray it into oil? Burning oil or gas, right? 
if I can put that, it's going to make it worse. <laughs> right? So we need to make sure we know what it is beforehand. Um, here's your basic fire extinguisher. And if these aren't real, they're as real as, as, as can be. Where's the, do you guys all know where the closest fire extinguisher to your department is? Do some north and south, some. Do it. It's one of those things you walk past them every day, you never think about it. Which is good because you don't need them very often. But it's worth it. That's a good training thing to do for, for the safety folks. The safety committee is, is, is talking about where are they? Where are they at? Where's the closest one to your department? If something wants to start on fire, where are you? Don't know. Same way with like AEDs. Right? They're all over the place. We don't think about them too much because we don't use them very often. But it's good to know. Somebody's having a heart attack or something's on fire, and somebody says, hey, we're going to get the fire extinguisher. You're going, oh, and so you're just going to run down the hall until hopefully you see one. Right? So they need to be signed well, and we need to know where they're at, right? Right off the top of our head. So uh, uh, the anatomy of a fire extinguisher, right? Top is the discharge lever. That's what we're going to squeeze down on to make it, make it uh, propel whatever's inside of it. Uh, the locking pin here, discharge hose. The nozzle, they've got different shapes and sizes of the nozzles. Kind of become hey, one safety tip before we use these, because I know we'll forget once we get, uh, get it turned on because I get all excited. <laughs> don't, don't point this at someone's eyes because it's lasers, right? So you wouldn't point a real extinguisher at someone and don't point this at anyone. Right? So now you've been told. Uh, free of any liability or negligence if someone wants to melt someone's eyes. Uh, Pretty, pretty basic. The body, the data plate, data plate is going to tell you what's in it, right? What type of extingu uh, extinguisher it is. It's got pictograms as well. Usually it'll have those letters. Pretty easy to tell. And then the body. That's just the big red metal canister that it's in. Pretty simple. We'll run through these quick. Uh, this is uh, pressurized water, also known as an APW or air pressurized water. It, uh, Two and a half gallons up to one minute discharge time. Should be a pressure gauge so you can tell if it's pressurized or not. That's one of the things we look at when we do uh, an inspection of a fire extinguisher. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, 30 to 4, 30 to 40 foot maximum effective range. I went to Lincoln High School many years ago, and in the big main hallway between the gym and the school, there were like six of those big chrome ones hanging on the wall. And we knew that they squirted at 40 feet because we'd spray each other with them all the time. <laughs> Get in trouble. And then they'd have to come and recharge them, right? Because kids do what kids do. That's why uh, a lot of these are locked in cabinets with glass that you have to break to get to them. So people like me when I was 16 don't uh, use them for things they're not supposed to use. Uh, start and stop is necessary. This is one you can use, and once you close the valve, it's going to close the valve. If, if the, uh, when we get to the ABC extinguishers, we can't reuse them. Once we break the seal, all the propellants can leak out, right? And they're not going to be able to get, so we've got to get recharged right after we use them. Uh, what it does is it extinguishes by cooling the burning material, right? The liquid, the water cools it, pretty simple. Carbon dioxide, these are pretty fun. They're uh, intended for class B or C. And they're the ones that make the huge noise when they blow out all that steam and the little ice chunks and stop the steam. It's, it's cool there. But they're uh, interesting. You don't see them around very often. Two and a half to 100 pounds of CO2, eight to 30 seconds, just some stats. That really, you're not going to be worried about much of this when something's burning. You're going to use it until it's gone. Hopefully, that puts it out. If it doesn't, then we're going to what? Get another one if you can. <laughs> and you're safe. That's with the race. We'll talk about the race later. The, uh, a little shorter effective range, you don't get 40 feet with these. It smothers the burning materials, decreases the temperature of the materials as well. Right? So that is a CO2 or carbon dioxide exposure. Here's the most common, the multi-purpose, or the ABC. These are what 99% of what you see on the wall anywhere are going to be the ABC. Uh, two and a half to 20 pounds of a dry chemical, eight to 25 seconds of discharge. That's the cool part about these training ones is they give you the same discharge time, they work from the same distance, they're the same weight, they're pretty much the exact same feel other than you're not risking burning anything down when you're training. Uh, pressure gauge to allow visual capacity check, right, that is the thing here, you can see it's all red, there's one little green sliver at the top. You always want to make sure that you look and see what that, the uh, indicator is in that area. 5 to 20 foot maximum effective range. 20 is a little on the long end. I don't know if you're going to get much done from that far away. It kind of dissipates at that distance. It smothers the burning material. It separates the burning material from the oxygen. That's how it puts out the fires. All right. 
one more little uh, visual aid on what they're for and what they do. Do you guys have a copy of this PowerPoint? Pretty sure it's awesome. Take that with it. Use that to review. Um, so now we've got the we've got a fire truck. We got. I mean, get some background on this. So we got. We've got a fire department, right? And we're going to start with the race, right? So we haven't went through the extinguisher yet. First thing we do is rescue. What are, who, what are we concerned about? What's our main concern in any emergency? Human, right? People, safety, getting people out of there. So by rescue, we need to sound alarms. We're going to know what type of building you're in and what kind of alarm it has. It may just mean you yelling at the top of your lungs, fire, get out of here, right? Running, if it's your house, right, we're going to run to every room, make sure everybody's out. We're rescuing humans, we're making sure everybody's out, right? Then we'll sound the alarm, right? Whether that's pulling alarm on the wall, call 911, just depends. There's all different kinds of alarms, different places, but we need to let sure, or make sure that uh, everybody knows the place is burning, right? Contain, how do we contain a fire? Shut doors. As we leave, we're shutting doors behind us. We're trying to wall that fire off as many times or as many places as we can so that it's contained, right? So the rescue alarm, contain, and then extinguish. So right, we're going to do those three things before we worry about putting the fire out. We want to make sure everybody's safe. Um, sound the alarm or call 911 and we shut doors. Now if we've got that going, we can worry about putting the fire out. So, here's a list of things we want to consider. I'm going to turn that off. The, uh, has the fire department been called? Is it a good idea to start putting out a fire? I'm going to get this out for the fire. The uh, fire department gets here anyway, so I'm just going to put it out. And then we realize that our extinguisher is not big enough. So now the fire's been burning that much longer, and uh, first responders haven't been notified. Right? We got to get, give them the best chance of, of helping us, so we call them first. Right? We'll call them before we grab the extinguisher. Call them and get them on their way. Can we get out safe? Right? Can I exit the building if the fire is? Let's pretend that this exit was not here and the, uh, the fire's in the middle, but it's small. Am I going to sit down here and call 911 and wait and see if everything's going we want to get We want to get on the other side of that fire, so there's a... Uh, I was taught always fight a fire with the, uh, with the door behind you, right? so we can back out away from the fire. Right? Uh, get the right type of extinguisher for the fire type. If we don't know, Get out of there, right? If it's in, you got a, a huge building with all kinds of shops, strange materials that you have no idea what they are, right? And do we know what comes off of them if they're burning? Plastics. I mean, that's that's one of the biggest risks to firefighters is are, are the fumes that come off of furniture, of whatever we have stored in our houses that we hoard for years and years, and that starts on fire. And, and the fire's honestly not their first concern because they got to get through the smoke to get to the fire, right? And they need to make sure that smoke's not toxic as well. Um, <laughs> Is the fire small and contained? And that's when they say incipient. They say fire extinguishers are to be used on incipient fires. And that's basically a fire that has started and is still in the area that it started. It hasn't spread. Say somebody throws a cigarette in the garbage can, right? Garbage catches on fire. It's just in the garbage can. That's incipient. Once it goes up the wall and starts to move to other things, now it's beyond that. Excuse me, we're not going to try to fight that. Right? <clears throat> Free from other dangers, we talked about smoke, we talked about if it's a, an electrical fire, right? Do we have to worry about electrical hazards? Is, is there anything else that can get us, right? So we're always worried about our safety first and the safety of others before we're worried about buildings, right? We've got insurance for buildings, we can get a new building. If we can't answer yes to all those, then we want to evacuate. We're going to get out of there and make sure 911 has been called and get a safe distance from the fire. Do you guys have an emergency plan for fires? Everybody shake, yes. And if you if you don't, then go back and talk about it when you get to your office. If we don't know what it is, go back and, and review it so you know what it is. Where do we go? Does everybody know where to go? Fire alarm goes off. We practice that regularly. Excellent. Good. We practice it. Good morning. It was unintentional, I've heard. That's cool. Those are the good ones. Is it real? I don't know. I'm going to sit wait. No, you're not. <laughs> it's like the tornado siren. We're downtown. The tornado goes off. Everybody goes, or everybody goes right to the window to look out and see. <laughs> on the second floor by the glass, maybe we should go in the basement. Um, all right, talk about that. Always stand with an exit to your back. Make sure it's safe for you to get out of there if you are going to fight a fire. 
several feet from the fire, I would say 10 feet, 12 feet, you're going to tell. If it's too hot, you're too close, right? Uh, and then move closer as we're putting it out, right? Use the pass method. We'll talk more about that. If possible, use the buddy system, right? We're going to have somebody back us up, make sure we're safe, or somebody else go call 9 That's the best case scenario, right? I'm going to fight this fire. You're going to go call 911 and make sure everybody's getting out of here, everyone's evacuating, we're, we're containing it. Monitor to make sure it doesn't reignite. So we get it out, and whew, that's good, we leave. And then the smoke kicks back up. We had a fire in, in one of the uh, counties we represent. Uh, knocked down a bunch of trees, cleaned out a ditch. It was on fire, burned it, covered it with dirt. For the dozer. Like four days later. Four days after they covered it in dirt, did like half a million dollars worth of damage as the fire is going, picked it up, and pushed it across. So they, they do reignite, not. Uh, not strange at all for that to happen. So, Pastor, everybody say it with me. What do we do first? We're pulling the pin. When we do this training for real, what we normally do is just take a can or a, uh, an oil pan, fill with diesel, light it on fire. And this is the hardest part. It's the people who stand up for five minutes pulling on this thing to try to get it. Exactly. Twist and pull. you got to break it, right? It's, it's made to not come out easily. So, twist it, pull it, get it broken. What about that zip tie on it? That zip tie? That's just a seal. That's to keep. That's so we know that it hasn't been used. That's that's your brick. And I've seen them where they had nails stuck through and bent. That's pretty effective. I've never used that. To be sure. Or an actual zip tie. You know, a wire tie. That's pretty hard to break unless it's a little too long. Right? You got to have a pair of side cutters hanging next to it to get to them. So that's why we do the monthly inspections to make sure nobody did something like that. Nobody altered it. Nobody made it extra safe for us so that it, uh, it actually won't work. Right? So we're going to aim at the base. We don't aim at the flames, we aim at the base where the flames are contacting whatever it is they're burning. Squeeze the handle, right? That discharges whatever that uh, extinguisher has inside of it. And then we're going to sweep it from side to side. And we'll get a practice. That's the coolest part about this is it's not easy. It doesn't let you win. You've got to actually do it. Um, now, does, the, uh, does maintenance do all the fire extinguisher inspections? I'm assuming here. Nobody's responsible to do it in that area. If you don't know, if you're not the one doing it, we're hoping somebody does. But maintenance that's required. So, and these, this says county, it's, it's county is what I did this for last, so I apologize, it should say college. Uh, have these things inspected by a vendor annually. So somebody needs to come in annually. They're the one that puts that new tag on the front. It says we've certified it, we've done whatever tests are necessary. If, if it's due for tests, there's every so many years we have to pressure test and we have to do different things. So we need a, a professional to do that. Once a year they come in and do that. Uh, we should have them located along paths of travel, near exits, entrances, right? Easy for folks to see, easy to find, common areas. Not disrupted from view. I see a lot of them in shops with extensions cords hung around them or welding jackets or whatever. It's a nice place to hang stuff. Hard to see them when something starts on fire, right? It's got a jacket on. Time of the extinguisher shall not be more than five feet from the floor. Right? We've got to be able to reach it. The view is obscured, shall be signed so it's visible from the normal path of travel. You should be able to sit in the middle of a room and look all the way around and see where the fire extinguisher is. If you can't see, especially in shops where there's all different kinds of things in the shop that could block your view, that's really why we need these signs pointed. That's the exact reason the exit signs are that high, right? So we can see them from wherever we're at. Uh, so we talked about the annual, and they should also have a monthly inspection, right? Where we look at that slide now. The, uh, the monthly inspection, we're going to make sure that it's not damaged, right? That it's not rusty, that it hasn't fallen out, hit the floor, and has a big dent in it or a crack, right? Make sure it's not damaged. Um, we're going to make sure everything's in order, it works. Make sure that the uh, seal's still in place and that the uh, gauge is in the green. Pretty simple. Make sure it's ready to go. And it doesn't take long for the uh, propellant to leak out. We were doing training down in Saline County. We probably had a half an hour between when we did the hands-on and we went back to another classroom, came back, did the hands-on again, and there was not enough propellant in it to, uh, to be useful at all. So the, the, that powder gets in the seal, it can't seal up, whatever the propellant's in there leaks out, and then they're, they're useless. So you think, oh, I just use a little bit of it, I'll hang it back up on the wall. Right. There's plenty of uh, there's plenty of the powder in there, but there's no propellant. So any questions? See, that was relatively painless, wasn't it? 